Hello and welcome back to Just Code It. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fast API, specifically query parameters. Query parameters are all the other parameters used in your methods that are not used within your path. So good use cases for these are filtering, pagination, sorting items, and validation of items in some ways. Basically, if you want like a limit and you want it to be dynamic, you would use a query parameter. Query parameters come at the end of your path parameters and they take the form of a question mark and then the, the parameter name and then the value. And then you can just chain them together without any spaces and that is how you would pass them to the API. To start out, we're going to define our fast API app and then create some sample data. We're just doing some sample items in a store. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom here, we define our root path, and then we do our if name equals main, import unicorn, and then we run it with reload set to true. Scroll back up to the top, we're gonna create a enum class or sorting options, so we can either sort by name, price, or category. This is all just setting up the app so that we can not come back to this later. And then we're going to create a pydantic model where we're going to do ID, name, category, and price, and then set their types. Inherits from the base model. Finally, we're creating that root path I just said, where we're just going to create a little HTML and pass it to our model. So this will show up as a oh, wrong one. Let's rerun the app in debug mode, go to the URL. And as you can see, this is the HTML. Now after that, let's close that out. And let's go to the documentation. So here you can see we just have the root. And if we try out the root, just execute it, you can see the HTML comes back. The first scenario we're going to look at is pagination. So pagination typically takes in two query parameters. You have your skip and your limit. So limit is just how many items you're going to return. And skip is basically an offset. So how far into the list are you going to start? If you had a list of X amount and you had a skip of five, you would start at the fifth value and then go to the limit. To illustrate this pagination, we're going to start with a path that goes to items. And we're basically going to list the items with a skip and a limit of 10. By default, it will have a skip of zero and a limit of 10. Basically, what we're doing here is taking the sample data and starting at the skip and then doing the skip plus the limit to get the end, the new end value and just grabbing that chunk of data, just slicing it and then returning it. Now, an interesting thing that we can do here is now let's go up past the limit. So let's go to 10. Now, we technically do not have this many items in our list, but it will actually not overflow and it will just give us the limit. So we do not actually have to do that data validation within this method. It does it on its own. After pagination, we're going to create a search endpoint. To do this, we're going to do another path parameter starting at items slash search and from here we're going to do if q basically if there is a query we're going to return the item in that list then else we're basically going to return the sample data after i write this out i'll walk through it our query parameter is just q it's optional so you do not need to use it so you can just use the path without that and it does not have a default value. In the body of the search endpoint, we are going to do a simple if statement where we check to see if the query parameter or the search string is even set. If it is set, we're then just going to do a simple for loop over the sample data and check to see if it matches the query. And if it does, we return it as a list. Otherwise, we're just going to return the whole list. Now to illustrate this, we have this example one right here. 
where we're going to search for laptop and there's only one entry for laptop. And then if we do not pass a query parameter, it will return all of them. Another common use for query parameters is filtering data. It's going to be another item slash filter path where we're going to have a couple parameters here. We're going to have a min price, a max price, and a category. We can just peek at the documentation real quick, and this will show up in the docs in our Fast API app. Here, let's go here, reload, filter. As you can see, the docs, when you do it on your method, will also show up in your documentation, which is convenient. So we give it an example as well. But the first thing we're going to do is filter the items with the specific price. So here we're going to loop over create a list of items with a min price and a max price in between them. After filtering on price, we're then going to filter on the category. So if category is set, because category is optional, we do not need to have it set. So we'll skip this if it is. Also, min price and max price are mandatory, but they have values as their defaults. So if you don't fill them out, then it's all good. Inside this if statement, we're filtering the items down again. And we're just looping over the filtered items already, grabbing the ones that have the same category. Then last but not least, we're just going to be returning that filtered items. To take a look at this, we have this example URL. As you can see, we got the max price, min price, and then our category is going to be electronics. We filter it looks like there's one now if we get rid of the category everything will be fine there's two and if we just get rid of everything it will filter to the defaults which i guess is all of them oh yeah it wasn't zero to infinity so yeah obviously it's all of them but if you change the defaults to be up until thousand or whatever our highest one is it would filter it down for you the next endpoint we're going to create is the sort endpoint Again, this is going to be an item slash sort where it's going to be sort by and then descending as a Boolean with a default value. All of these are mandatory. We're going to use the sort by that we created earlier, which is a neat enum that has name, price, and category as the specific, specific field that we are going to search on. After you create your sort items method, go down and this one's pretty quick as well there is just a sort items is equal to sort and then our sample data and our key is going to be a lambda function where we're gonna sort on x which x is going to be the sample data in this case and then sort by the field that we pass it through our enum the great use for enums here is you're going to get a drop down selector in the user interface for the docs, as well as it will do a lot of data validation for you. So it can save you a headache. And then reverse is set to descending. So if it's true, then it will be reversed. And we just return the items. Now, if we take a look at this, this is sorting on price. So high first because we have it also as descending. And if we get rid of that, we just sort by price. It will be low to high because the default value is false for descending. Last but not least, we have a validation endpoint that we're going to create. The validation endpoint is going to retrieve items with validation query parameters for pagination and the search. To do this, we're going to do another item slash validate as the path parameter. The method is going to be validate items with parameters of page size and search. All of these parameters are going to have types as well as a default value. So these are going to be the default values for the query parameters, which we're going to have a default of one greater than zero and a description number of pages that must be greater than zero. 
For size, we're going to also have a set to a query parameter with a default of 10, greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 100, and then just a description. Finally, for the parameters, we're going to have a search parameter with a type of string with a minimum length of 3 and a maximum length of 50, as well as a description. First thing we're going to do within the body of this method is calculate the start and end indices of our pagination. The the first part of our method body is going to be calculating the start and end indices for pagination. Start, we're going to do start equals page minus one times the size. And for the end, it's just going to be the start plus the size. And after calculating the indices for the pagination, we're then going to initialize the filtered items with all the items. After creating the filtered items, we're then going to have an if statement right below that that checks to see if the search parameter is set by checking if it exists, basically, if it's not none. And if it is not none, it will then filter those items down based off of the search parameter that it passed. Finally, when we're all done with that, we can now return the data so we're going to return our page, our size, our total filtered items, and then filtered items paginated for start to end. Now that we have everything coded down, we can take a look at how this will look. And this one might be easier to use the docs for. Okay, let's reload. And here we have the validation. And we can click try it out. Now you can see the default values are already set in there. Scroll up, default of 1, default of 10, and then nothing set here, so it's a null. If we click this, it will bypass the filtering section and it should return all 10. Yep. If we want to do a search parameter on top of this and actually define one, we can put in laptop and it will fil filter them all down to laptop. We can also do laptop and then, or we can do that and then the page of five. After searching for laptop, let's take a look at how the pagination's going. So let's do a page size of five and see what we get back. We should get two pages now. And yep. We have one and two pages just in order with its size. And we can also do size of three. We get three items back. Total size. That is it for this video on query parameters. Up next on this series of Fast API, we have Pydantic models. Leave a comment down below if you want me to cover anything specific in that video. That is it for today and I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you next time.